Once again, Dominique Browning. I am so thrilled and honored to be here. I will never walk in space, but I am walking on air. I'm representing a wonderful team. We've been together from the start. Kate Caprari, Ronnie Citrin Fink, Gretchen Dalkemper, Sean Dakin, Molly Rausch, Annika Whisker. Thank you. You inspire me every day. An enormous thank you to my co founders, without whose guidance moms would never have taken off Hani Grantham, Sue Mandel, Vicki Patton, and Cynthia Hampton. And thank you to Fred Krupp and Elizabeth Thompson at Environmental Defense Fund. Fred took a flyer on us and gave us a nest. And a huge thank you to Alison Rockefeller, the Women in Conservation, and to David Yarnold and the Audubon Society. My first memory of being awestruck by nature was as a three-year-old meeting a hummingbird. So many of us fall in love with the world through the grace of a bird. Rachel Carson took on a fierce enemy in the chemical industry when she fought to protect the vulnerable shells of eagle chicks compromised by DDT. Who would have thought decades later that we would be taking on equally fierce enemies to protect the thin shell that sustains human life on this planet? Who would have thought that mere mortals could compromise the chemistry of the oceans or the composition of our atmosphere. We are, as Jeremy Grantham often says, in the race of our lives. We are in a race to stop the emissions of carbon and methane and other climate change drivers before we do grave damage that we cannot control. Our work is urgent. It is not about being alarmist, but it is about being alarmed. We cannot allow polluters to treat our skies as their sewers. We cannot allow climate deniers to pollute our politics or to pollute our minds to sow confusion, doubt, and distrust, paralyzing us so that we don't act firmly and decisively. We have the power to clean up air pollution. We've done it before, and we can do it again. That's our message over and over when we meet with mayors, governors, and senators, with EPA and utility companies, school superintendents, and public health officials. Our message is being heard on up to the White House, now amplifying the connection between climate pollution and our children's health. We've changed the conversation from polar bears to people. When you get right down to it, Mom's Clean Air Force is about re-engaging old-fashioned habits of citizenship. We're now three-quarters of a million members strong. Our moms are Republicans and Democrats. We are doctors and nurses, artists and homemakers, religious leaders and business people. But above all else, we are mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles and sisters and brothers. We're caregivers. We want what is best for all our children. And we have a moral obligation to act. I became a grandmother last month, too. I gaze in awe at that tiny creature, our baby chick, just as I gazed at my own sons in my arms many years ago. And I, too, want to be able to look my grandson in the eye someday and tell him I did everything I could to make this world safer for all of us. So join us at Mom's Clean Air Force. Become more alarmed. Become more engaged in whatever way suits you best. But most of all, become more hopeful. Hope, not fear, drives great change, change for the better. The greatest power we humans have is the power of love and love has got to be stronger than pollution. We are uniting for the love of our babies, for the love of our birds, for love of all the gifts we are given in this life, in this world. So join me in telling Washington, listen to your mothers. 